The Pirates are 4-2, and two, coming into their next game against Kansas State, heavily favored, as they're only 1-5. However, they also have a chance to get revenge against Iowa State in this episode. They're ranked and beat us quite decisively last season. This team is still figuring out what it wants to be. Our offense scored 93 points over the past two games, but our defense also gave up 93 points. But who needs defense anyways? It's the Big 12 we're talking about. We scored a season high of 63 points last week. In addition to this, freshman phenom running back Trevor McKnight not only won NCAA play player of the week with six touchdowns, but also propel themselves into the Heisman conversation. I don't even know when this happened. Taj Berry is hurt out for five weeks with a strained back? The game did not pop that up against Baylor. That is not fair. That's the first major injury of the series, and it's the best player on our team, arguably. We are down horrendously bad. And finally, Deuce Vaughn is still on this team. He decided not to go pro, so we need to worry about stopping him. I hope everyone's having a great day so far. If you have not done so already, be sure to check out the channel update for the MKU Seismos Dynasty, how you can become a player, get involved, etc. Because this series is moving over to Twitch after season two, I'm planning on keeping all the VODs and making a yearly update in the form of a mega episode. Let me know if that's something that interests you. But only a few normal episodes left in this series. Let's make them count. This is usually Taj Berry territory, but Ibrahim Bashir back to return the kick from about two yards deep. We'll have to see what he can do as it feels weird to not have Berry back there. He weaves to the middle, cuts it back to the right side to the 35-40, and he's just tripped up at the 42. No disrespect to Bashir, he did great, but Taj Berry probably houses it with that extra speed boost. Nonetheless, great starting field position for the Pirates, but they're faced with third down and nine. Brooks draws back, throws it, it's intercepted! Who was that to? Noah Brooks is apparently colorblind. He had Titus Tilly wide open on the curl route and threw it to the middle of the field. We've seen the Pirates lose games if Noah Brooks cannot get into a rhythm. This is bad. Howard read option right side inside the 10 and outruns defenders into the end zone for the first points of the game. K-State goes up 7-0. Brooks will have a chance to redeem himself on third down and long. Two by two from the gun. Takes a snap, third and 12. Interior pressure comes and he's hit as he throws incomplete. An 0 for 4 start and a pick. They'll punt. The Wildcats only have a 60 yard field to work with as they hand off I formation. Vaughn, he spins off a tackler. Still on his feet after breaking another. And he's down inside the 45 and tack on 15 with a late flag. East Carolina's defense has been atrocious and they're exploiting it early on. Howard, play action keeper. Down all the way near the 10 yard line, another chain mover. Everything that they are trying is working. Second down and four, they go heavy. Goal line set. Howard pitches right side. Vaughn, nobody expected that. And he's into the end zone again. We're still in the first quarter. The Pirates are down 14. This Dorman offense goes back to work. Brooks on third down over the middle to Tilly and he can't hang on through the big time hit. It's a Tilly special. Brooks off to an 0 for 6 start. It really feels like the Pirates are losing to themselves rather than the Wildcats at this point. Play action, Howard looking to the tight end over the middle and it's nearly intercepted. John Chadwick was lurking, third down. That play could have completely shifted momentum, but they still have a chance to get off the field on third down. Howard taking a shot deep in Rilo Wilborn, nicely done. Swats it away last second, they'll punt. Great defensive stand from the Pirates. Now they just got to get the offense going. Down 14. They'll try a read option left side with Brooks, which gains about seven yards before he takes a shot. They'd run the ball down to the 35-yard line, make it first down and 10 play action. Brooks looks over the middle, has a man. It's Peppercorn past the sticks, and he gets down to the 15 with a gain of 15. Finally inside the red zone, but can they capitalize? Third down and eight. Brooks has a decision to make. Nothing's open. Rolls out to his right side to the 20. He's going to take off with this one, and that lane closed real quick. Fourth and one, they leave their offense out on the field. A big play, they have zero points on the board. They just need a yard. Hand off McKnight straight up the middle and he gets denied immediately. Promising drive, but that gamble does not pay off. Very disappointing as Knowles comes in motion, takes the handoff left side. Rasmussen falls down and he's got nothing but green in front of him. And this crowd is silenced, watching Knowles take this one the distance for the touchdown. Winston Rasmussen tripped over Jordan Fowler, didn't have enough time to recover, and it gives K-State a 21-0 lead. What a brutal start for the Pirates against the team they beat last year. Brooks play action, watch out, rolls right, he goes down as he tries to get it away. A loss of 13, and the nightmare continues. Nothing has worked on offense. Brooks counter run, McKnight left side. Finally some room, races around the corner. He's got a first down and more, all the way across the 50, and shoved out of bounds at the 38 yard line into Wildcat territory. Leave it to Trevor to revive your dead offense.
Rooks in the gun, goes play action, fresh set of downs. Looks up the seam, has a man, it's Big Bird! Down inside the five yard line with a big time gain. The biggest pass play of the game for ECU. Fourth and goal, three plays later, Brooks handoff, Valentine up the middle into the end zone. They're finally on the board. They still left the Wildcats with quite a bit of time. 150 and ticking. Howard draw play. Vaughn up the middle. Cleet Matthews can't get him down. And he escapes into the open field. He's wearing this pirate defense down with a gain of 12. They'll keep eating this clock. One minute to go across the 40 yard line. Howard draw play Vaughn yet again. But this time the Pirates are ready for it. Big play from John Chadwick. It's third down. A stop in this situation would be huge for this ECU defense going into the half. Play action. Howard looks for somewhere to go. Runs out of time and he's drilled into the turf. It's Tajik Bush for a loss of six. And that is how we'll go into the locker room. 21-7, but the Pirates have some momentum. You can't help but wonder what Coach Rover is saying in that locker room. This is a one-win Kansas State team that bullied us in the first half. At least they ended with a touchdown and a big stop on defense, but they need better play consistently in all areas of the game. Howard in the gun, faced with third and nine, hit as he throws deep downfield and it's intercepted! Picked off Rilo Wilborn down the deep middle of the field and the Pirates start out the half with a turnover. How about Noah Brooks in the offense? Can they get something going? Single back set, blitz comes. Brooks over the middle has Bird again. He's open for another first down. Catch number two on the game. Can the Pirates get across the 50 yet again from the shotgun? Brooks play action. Looks downfield, has Bird one more time. He outruns the defender inside the 20, inside the 10, and all the way down to the one yard line on a 52 yard catch and run. They needed someone to step up in Taj Berry's absence. Pedro Bird showing that it can be him early on. Couldn't quite get in the end zone, so it's first down and goal from the one. McKnight takes the handoff and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. The Pirates have scored 14 unanswered points. It's suddenly only a one possession game. Can Will Howard in the offense rebound after the interception? Bunch to the left side. Howard in the gun, steps up, throws to the sideline, and he's got Knowles. He breaks away from a tackle attempt all the way down inside the 25-yard line. They're not going down without a fight. A few plays later, Vaughn in the single back, third down and one. He gets the flip right side yet again. Rasmussen can't bring him down, and he slips a tackle on his way for a 14-yard touchdown. ECU challenged him to score. They answered. We've got an interesting game on our hands. Fourth down and two for Brooks in the offense. They want to go for it. Quick slant to Horn. He's got it across the 50-yard line. Line. Wide receiver number one in the absence of Taj Berry. Another third down situation for the Pirates. From the gun, Brooks against the blitz, throws the north cut. He hits the step back by one defender in the acceleration boost into the open field and into the end zone. Interesting case with Kyron Northcutt. He has come on at times this year and been a factor. Other times he's just disappeared. He'll have a chance to step up until Barry returns. For now, it's a one score game as the Wildcats lead 28-21. Howard in the gun, pressure comes again. It's Tajik Bush for the second time. A loss of eight pushes him back to second and 18. Third down and nine. Two plays later, Howard against a four-man rush, dumps it off for Vaughn, and Boomer Brooks makes sure he does not get any further than four yards. They'll punt. A chance for ECU to tie from the pistol set. Brooks hands off McKnight, who takes this one up the middle, spinning all the way down after a gain of 11 into Wildcat territory. They're starting to run the football effectively from the shotgun. Brooks counter run left side. McKnight cuts this one upfield, and he has a big gain of 13 yards before being brought down inside the 20. A run and a pass go nowhere. It's third down and 10. Two by two from the gun. Brooks drops back. Four-man rush over the middle. He's got Peppercorn wide open into the end zone for a touchdown. We've got a tie ball game after an excellent drive. Under seven to go in the fourth quarter. We're tied 28 apiece. Handoff Vaughn up the middle. Tries to look for room only a gain of three. Brings up third down. They've done a good job against him this half. Meanwhile, Howard goes play action over the middle of the wheeler and he drops it. Would have been short anyways, but the Pirates force a punt. Crazy to say that after a 21-0 deficit, they have a chance to take their first lead. Stretch run left side, McKnight looks for room outside, cuts it in, cuts it back out, he's got Green in front of him. One to beat, he's diving at his ankles. And call him Trev the Kite McKnight, cause he can fly. And East Carolina has taken the lead with 5.43 to go in the game. Honestly, the best run of Trevor McKnight's career so far. Changing directions, outrunning defenders. That's my Heisman front runner. K-State's offense has been stagnant this entire half. The Pirates get the ball back with under four to go. In motion comes Horn. He takes the handoff from left to right. Looking like Taj Berry on his way for another first down. Again at 13. Continuing to milk the clock. Second down and four. Brooks from the gun. Quick throw outside to Horn yet again. He breaks the tackle out of bounds inside the 40. 
Second down and three from the shotgun. They're looking to throw again. Brooks against the blitz. Dumps it off to Bashir on the outside. He makes a move inside and spins his way down to the 13. Now let's pat our Heisman contender stats a little bit. Two-yard touchdown run, number three on the game. That's a school record in a single season, and we're only at the seven-game mark. A ridiculous freshman campaign so far, and he'll get one more chance with one second to go. Stretch run left side, and nobody's out there. One Wildcat defender giving chase to the 50, and that's all Trevor McKnight needs to take it for a 91-yard touchdown to make it 50-28 to after a pointless two-point conversion. A dominant second-half performance from the Pirates to come back and win this one after being down 21-7 to early on. They outscored the Wildcats 33-7 to in the second half. It was a slow start for Noah Brooks, but he did eventually find his footing, 50% completion percentage. Well, you already know the X Factor. Trevor McKnight, 322 on the ground, four touchdowns. He had his longest run of his career with just one second to go in the game. Kind of a flex. It was our first game without Taj Berry in the receiving game. Pedro Bird wanted to make sure everyone knew he is still here. Three catches, 98 yards. Much better second half from the defense. Tajik Bush had two sacks, and of course, Rilo Wilborn with the interception. Quarterback athlete Jamarl Hinton committed to the team, and that means that we are done with the recruiting class for season two. As you know, we can only offer scholarships to 12 players per year. And I'll tell you what, this class is particularly very exciting. Along with winning NCAA Player of the Week for the second straight week, Trevor McKnight has jumped to number one on the Heisman watch, and it's well-deserved for the freshman. Iowa State's number 13 in the country coming into this game, but our offense has scored the second most points in college football with 43.3. And while this isn't the same Iowa State team we played last year, they lost Brock Purdy, Brees Hall, but still have a pretty loaded roster and quarterback Hunter Deckers is nearly as good as Purdy already. Let's not forget that the Cyclones did pump us last year in our home stadium and that we have a new reinforcement of freshman talent to hopefully take them down and drop their spot in the ranking. Both teams go three and out to start the game. Finally a first down as Trevor McKnight picks up five on the rush. Cyclones show blitz on second down and ten. Brooks from the shotgun takes a snap over the middle and misses anyone that he could possibly throw to. Two receivers were in the area. A very slow start make it third down and ten. They set up screen right side. McKnight he makes the catch. Not a lot of space. Finds it anyways around the corner breaks a tackle and picks up a first down. Trevor literally is this offense in the first quarter. They continue their possession from the 35 yard line in Cyclone territory. Brooks to the outside has Horn and not quite enough for a first down. So a big third down situation two tight ends right side. Brooks takes a snap. Quick slant to Tilly and he hauls it in this time down to the 17 yard line. Had a drop in that first game. Finally in the red zone looking to draw first blood. Noah Brooks quick throw outside. He's got Bird inside the five. Stiff arms his way into the end zone for a touchdown down. Bird finally gets one. ECU up 7-0. Can they force another stop on third down and two? 34 seconds left in the first quarter. Decker's in the gun. Brock to his right. Goes play action. The lefty dumps it off for the tight end. Dean and he gets wrapped up before the sticks. Nicely done. Winston Rasmussen and they will punt. That's the sort of bend don't break defense we're used to seeing from this team as Brooks rolls out to his right side, looks for somewhere to go. He'll just step up to run and slides right before the marker. A few plays later, it's second down and three. Single eye safety for the Cyclones. Set up screen left side to McKnight. He has a blocker out there and spins down to the 20 yard line. Another first down for ECU. They're moving the football efficiently after a slow start. Play action. Brooks against the blitz to the outside and Horn makes the catch and bounds. Can they punch it in, however? Third down and goal. Brooks rifles into a tight window and Northcutt drops it and it's intercepted. Ruled an interception in the end zone. Brooks made a perfect throw. It just went off of his hands. Unbelievable. So Iowa State with a great opportunity to drive from the 35 yard line. 147 to go in the half. Deckers dumps this one off to Gyro Brock. He makes a man miss into open space and a burst of speed inside the 15. Trying to use ECU's mistake against them. First and 10 from the 13 yard line. Deckers tries to get away and he cannot escape Cleet Matthews. That's a huge sack for the Pirates. Can they get a stop on third down and 16? Trips to the left side. Decker sets up screen. It's not there. He's in a panic. Escapes one sack. Throws to skates on the run. And he almost gets enough for a first down. A field goal will make it a four-point game. And ECU has one more possession this half. Brooks takes a snap. Split backfield. Looks downfield. A man is wide open. It's North Cut. He accelerates inside the 20. And they'll hurry back to the line. As Brooks not wasting any time. He has a free play. He puts it up in double coverage and Horn somehow goes up to get it inside the one yard line and two big plays have them in scoring opportunity. Brooks sets up screen right side. McKnight walks into the end zone for a touchdown with 17 ticks to go. It's a 14-3 ball game and the Pirates get the ball coming out of the half. Brooks two by two. 
Looks to throw three-man rush, steps up to run, evades one man, breaks a tackle on the extra effort, and he's across the 40, inside the 45. Great effort from the Pirates as Northcutt comes in motion. Brooks to Bashir, back to Brooks, and watch out, he goes down. That flea flicker did not go as planned. And not a good look for the Pirates fans watching at home, but Cameron Condor, the backup, is checked into the game. He's against the blitz, hit as he throws, and that pass falls incomplete. The bigger question, what is wrong with Noah Brooks? Aside from a few plays, this has been a pretty boring game. We're already into the fourth quarter as Deckers throws off his back foot and Hutchinson hauls it in all the way down across the 35-yard line, 15 yards on the catch. However, a few plays later, it's third and sixth draw play to Jirel Brock, and the ECU defense unfooled this time, a loss of three. They'll try a field goal to make it an eight-point game from 50 out. This one hooks wide left, and it's not even close. Ibrahim Bashir on the return, races to the sideline to the 20, around the corner to the 30, beats one man, swerves to the inside, makes a move, and there he goes. Who needs Taj Scary Berry when you have Ibrahim Bashir looking like Chris Davis in the Iron Bowl? Kick six, ECU. Not sure when it's too early to start ruling out the Cyclones, but anything can happen with 2.20 to go. Decker's already across midfield, and never mind! A fumble straight into the hands of Bud Jägermeister. Continues the party for the Pirates. How about one more touchdown? Run up the score. Remember what they did to you last season. Ibrahim Bashir stretch run left side around the edge and down inside the 10. Make it second down and goal with 32 to go. Counter run left side. Wheaties, why not into the end zone for the first touchdown of his season. And the 28 to three route over Iowa State is complete in a game where our defense only gave up somehow three points against a ranked team. That's the best that they've played all year. We didn't even need Noah Brooks in this one, but we'll have to get an update on him at the end of the episode. All defense and big plays today. Trevor McKnight did not have a touchdown in this game, and we still won by 25. I guess I did mean rushing touchdown because he did have a receiving score in this game, along with Pedro Bird. Pretty solid game all around. Boomer Brooks was once again everywhere, but the biggest story today is that our pass rush is really coming alive at the right time. Huge sigh of relief for the Pirates as Noah Brooks was only out for the rest of that game precautionarily. He'll be ready to go next week. This is great news considering that we will need him for our serious run run at the Big 12 Championship. Cincinnati is the only team in front of us. We play them in two episodes. Remember that a simple click of the like button goes a long way to helping out the channel and allows me to produce more high quality content. If you're new, remember to subscribe and leave your feedback on the series in the comments section below. This will conclude another episode of the East Carolina Pirates Dynasty on College Football Revamped. My name is Jack. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you to Patreon supporters Dalton Jett, Jason DeMarco, Digan Faria, Maki Harukawa, Christian Horn, Ibrahim Bashir, Jonathan Chadwick, Chrissy the King, Hum, Matthew, and Thomas Pontillo.